The Bears passing game on track, according to Matt Eberflus, it is. Sports Talk Chicago here with John's Glow. Appreciate you tuning in. Subscribe to the channel for more Chicago Bears content from myself and other content creators, including Corey Wooten, Clay Harbor, and Joey Christopoulos. Follow us all over the place at Sports Talk Chicago and make sure you support our sponsor, Amish Country Farms in Orland Park. Matt Eberflus is voicing his confidence in Justin Fields in a new quote yesterday after the Bears finished up some mini camp. He said that, quote, the Bears passing attack is on track after the offseason. He was asked about um, the passing game. He said it's a work in progress, but then he went on to say this longer quote. I think we're on track. I really do. I really feel good where we are. We spent a lot of time and attention on that as well, and we're going to continue doing that during training camp. To me, it's great to have those seven-on-sevens where you can work on the rhythm, the timing of it, work on your pass coverage as well. We're going to continue to do that. Like you guys said yesterday, we have guys that weren't in there, Claypool, Mooney, different guys that weren't in there that we're going to have to catch up on that, so we're going to continue to do that. And he's referencing Mooney and Claypool having some injuries so far and being sidelined during these seven-on-sevens. But a very encouraging quote for Matt Eberflus, to say the least. And really, it contradicts a report we did a week ago, that one coming from Adam Hogue over at CHGO, that Justin Fields had a bad day at camp. Saw a lot of your comments and hatred on that video. Hey, I'm just the news guy. I'm just reporting what I saw and giving you my opinion. And the fact is, if camp was as bad as Adam Hogue said it was for Justin Fields, then guess what? He's in big trouble. And that's not a controversial opinion. Why can't we critique players? I just don't get it. There is no hidden agenda here. If Justin Fields sucks, we're going to talk about it. If he does great, we're going to talk about that too. Hearing these words from Matt Eberflus, hearing this renewed vote of confidence in Fields is amazing, encouraging, and something I think everybody was waiting to hear and waiting to see. All the reports came out last week. Justin Fields had a bad practice. He is holding out of the ball too long. He's not as easily able to just throw the football and move forward. He's taking too much time to process things in the pocket. And everything calmed down. Took about a couple of days. No one said anything. Then we get this report from Matt Eberflus. Here's one thing we know over the past week and a half, and it's pretty telling. Nobody knows blank until the games actually occur. We're getting conflicting reports from reporters and head coaches, and Matt Eberflus's quotes don't exonerate Justin Fields. Of course, as the head coach and really the head PR person for the team, he's going to sing praises about Justin Fields. I'm not there. We're not there. We don't know exactly what's going on. The Bears prohibit video, even, during these mini camps and during some training camps. We won't know anything for the first six games of the season. Not going to kill Justin Fields after one bad game opening day. We're going to give him six or seven games to see how he does in year two of this same offense with this same head coach, same GM, and a ton of weapons now at his disposal. My guess was the following and will continue to be the following. 3,500 passing yards, almost 4,000 maybe, 1,000 plus rushing yards, and 30 touchdowns. I think those numbers are achievable for Justin Fields in 2023. So you guys conveniently forget about that part of last week's video. I really believe he can hit those numbers. And I think all this talking and all this reporting is meant to stir up emotion. And that's fine with me. I'm a pretty emotional guy. I love talking about bad reports, good reports, and feeding into it and learning about it, understanding it more, looking into it. But at the end of the day, we're not going to know anything till week one, week two, week five, week six. We'll know by week six how ready Justin Fields is in this system with new weaponry, how good he is, how much he's improved, if he's really the guy, and can he show more progress in this year for him. I think that's really the key. But hearing this from Matt Eberflus certainly does not hurt his case. Again, Eberflus said, quote, I think we're on track. I really do. I really feel good where we are. That's all you could say. That's all you could hear from your head coach at this point in the quote-unquote season. It's June, minicamp going on. We're not even at training camp yet. We're not even near game one yet, or preseason even. We're in the dog days of summer where there's not much to talk about. Maybe that's why all that came up from Adam Hogue or all these headlines were stirred up. 
by some of the Bears media. Everyone's looking for a story right now. Everyone's looking to explain what they see and understand it. And of course, with no video evidence at all, because it's banned by the Bears, it's going to lead to more scrutiny and speculation. Nobody knows anything except the people they're watching. I could believe and understand Justin Fields hesitating a bit, still having hesitation issues in the pocket. Not because he's a bad quarterback, but because new personnel on the field. And as we saw here, Darnell Mooney and Chase Claypool are still really not practicing. So he still has guys down, trying to learn this continued offense in year two and trying to work with the guys he's been given today, like forming the connection with D.J. Moore, which there have been tons of positive stories about that, how great they've had a connection with one another already. There are good things that we're seeing out of Bears camp. It's not all bad. And this quote from Matt Eberflus, although probably fluffed up for PR purposes, could very well be true. And I do agree or tend to agree that this Bears team is right on track. There's not much you could say at this point to indicate that they're off track or there's no progress or there are issues. We don't know yet. We could say definitively week six if Justin Fields is just sneaking it up and this Bears team's 0-6, yeah, there ain't no progress. But at this point, when all we have is minicamp, no video even, There's not much we could do or say other than, okay, things seem to be going all right. If there's an issue, we'll find out about it. And everything will show eventually in games. And that's the part that we have to understand and remember. All this right now is just talk back and forth. Reporters, coaches, Justin Fields, wide receivers, everybody's talking, talking, talking. We will see results, good or bad, during the season. And we'll know who's telling the truth and who isn't during the season. The games will show what the hell was really going on today and what's going on come the 2023 season. And until then, we have to speculate, we have to listen, we have to see how things play out. And that's it. We will know during the season if everything's really on track or not. If Justin Fields continues to hesitate or not. If these weapons are disconnecting or connecting with Justin Fields. We'll know all of this throughout the first six weeks. We're not going to sugarcoat anything here either, as you know. You should know that by now. I'm not afraid to criticize Justin Fields. I'm not afraid to give him praise either if he does great. There are loftier expectations for him and for this Bears team in 2023, but I think they're justified. Quotes like this also prove it, right? I think we're on track. I feel good where we are. Great. Then let's see it translate week one, week five, week six, week ten. Let's see this Bears team do what they're supposed to do this year, which is contend for a wild card spot, if not make a wild card spot. That's what we need to see. That's what we need to anticipate. Anything less is a failure. We have to anticipate a huge step in the right direction for this team. We're hearing reports, we're seeing reports about DJ Moore and Justin Fields. Even in this article, although the focus was Matt Eberflus, it does say the connection between Fields and Moore has been the talk during the offseason program, the talk of the town. The great connection between Justin Fields and D.J. Moore. I think D.J. Moore is going to have a breakout season in 2023 because he's actually been given a real quarterback for once. So we are going to see progress. We are going to see things moving forward in the right direction. That's the consoling part. But as we sit here today, yes, there have been conflicting reports, and we will have to wait and see who's right and who's wrong. It's that simple. But I will say I do believe Adam Hogue, to an extent, I do believe that there is some hesitation for Fields. There was last year. It's not all going to go away in five months. Oh, new season, new players, five months later, better be better. No, he's going to have to take time to get better, going to have to take time to get used to this weaponry and 
understand how to improve as a quarterback in year three of the NFL. What does that look like for him? I think everything's at where it should be at up to this point. These are great quotes from Eberflus. This is encouraging for Justin Fields and for Bears fans in general. But I would just say to anybody who's going to go all in on these or Adam Hoag's comments or really anybody else's comments, even mine, we have to wait till the season. We have to understand, put these comments in context when we see performance in games. That's when we'll know who's done great, who's telling the truth, and who's not living up to expectations. That's when we'll know. And until then, all of this is hearsay. All of it's fun to debate and discuss. All of it's fun to argue with on YouTube comments and on Twitter. But at the end of the day, we don't know anything yet. So stop pretending like you do or other people do. Even Matt Eberflus, he could be saying something just for the public image. We don't know what's exactly going on each and every day in camp. Yet, we will soon. And we'll see it on the field. And personally... I think it's almost a non-story if Justin Fields even has a bad training camp. I want to see what he does in the season. He could have the worst training camp, the worst preseason in NFL history. He could go 0 for 7, 7 picks, and that's the end of his preseason, then come out in the regular season and tear it up. I want to see what he does in the regular season. That's all that matters to me. I don't care what he does in minicamp, what he does in training camp, what he does in the preseason. I want to see real results and real games. That's when I'll know if things are going according to plan, if they're on track. And that's it. That's the only thing that we should do in order to judge all these comments from all these different places. What does the in-game performance say? Are the Bears winning games? Is Justin Fields improving? Are they putting up more points? Is their offense improved from year to year? That's how we'll know if they're on track or not. Everything else that's being said has no bearing on anything. In-game performance will tell the story. It's as simple as that. Thanks for watching today's show here on Sports Talk Chicago. Big thank you to John Meadows directing and producing all of you for tuning in. Subscribe to the channel for more Bears content here at Sports Talk Chicago. Follow us all over at Sports Talk Chicago. Support our sponsor, Amish Country Farms. So long, everyone.